The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The Masculine Journey starts here, now. Welcome to the Masculine Journey. We are very glad to have you with us in this mid-December. Can you guys believe it? Mid-December. Well, not really mid, almost mid. It's Christmas Eve, 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 something like that. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, a bunch of Eves before, but <laughs> you know, we're already, uh, yeah, really, we're mid-December, and it's hard to believe this year's almost over, you know, and it's been a good year. We've had a couple boot camps. Wonderful boot camps. Yeah, great boot camps. We have another one coming up in April. All right, and we've got exciting news about that boot camp, Robbie. You want to share it? Yes, yes. We, um, you know, like everybody, wants to give good gifts at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking about how we could do that here at the Masculine Journey, and we couldn't think of a better gift to give anybody than a boot camp. And so we came up with this idea of buy one boot camp, get one free, because we know that there's somebody out there that you would love to take to a boot camp, Dennis. A boot camp BOGO? <laughs> it is. <laughs> boot camp BOGO. You got it. That's, That's right. beautiful. I like so that. buy one boot camp at $199 coming in April. And please bring somebody that, you know, it would impact their life and have them, you know, have a chance to hear from God on those things. And what a way to uh, start off 2019 or 2018. I'm a year ahead of myself. Well, it would start off 2019 pretty well, too. Yeah. Just do it a year early. <laughs> <laughs> and and that'll be good through the end of the year, right? We're going to keep that special up through the end of the year. So, you know, you have a few weeks yet. If you haven't found that, that perfect gift for somebody that you just say, boy, what can I give them? And the gift of giving them their heart back would be really kind of cool because that's what God's done for us at these boot camps, guys, isn't it? Vinny, I know you've been to the boot camps before, but wasn't there one of the times along the way that God just kind of gave you part of your heart back or gave you something Something new at one of these camps? Oh, definitely. Most of the boot camps were like that. Uh, you really don't think of the things that you've had in your life. And I've had a long life, thank God. Uh, but it's brought out by a lot of people doing and having the same experiences that you've had. You're not special. Everybody has problems, happiness, you know. So a boot camp to me is something that everybody, everybody should at least go to one time because I guarantee you, you'll go to second. Absolutely. Thank you, Vinny. And, and I know, Dennis, for you, um, you know, I know the topic tonight's not about boot camp, but we are talking about mm -hmm. Christmas on tonight's topic. But that, that topic of giving somebody something back at Christmas, yeah. how special would it be for you to, to get a boot camp from somebody now that you've been to one? I think it would be awesome. You know, I, I, it really struck me what, what you said just a moment ago to to give someone their heart back because you see so many guys, and I know I was that way when I went to my first boot camp, still a work in progress that uh, my heart was hurting. There was a lot of stuff on top of my heart, and uh, God started to revive it, if you will, through the boot camps. And one of the things I remember about Vinny on one of the first camps I went to is I looked over at night. We were in the bunks in the uh, cabin there that we stayed in. And I remember looking over and seeing this older gentleman, and I didn't know who he was at the time, but it, every night that we were there before he went to bed, he was sitting there praying. And I thought, now there's something I could do a little bit more of and uh, brought me closer to God. So it's just uh, guys of all ages. It's very cool. Yeah, this last boot camp, uh, we, we had them of all ages in the teens up through the 80s. Right. You know, and everything in between and, and from all different walks of life, all different stations in life, all different journeys through life. So everybody qualifies and we'd love to have you come. Yeah, and it was really, you know, that diversity in ages that led to tonight's topic. It is. It is. And we, we got it from the boot camp. We did a question and answer session at the end of the boot camp where we asked, you know, the participants if they had questions for us and you know, our egos got deflated a little bit when the guy said, well, we really don't have any questions for you guys, but those teenagers over there, <laughs> <laughs> we got some questions for them. And they, they, were, they were loaded for bear. They were. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that they ask we'll come to here in just a little bit. But first, we'd like to get to a clip. 
And the, this tonight's topic is on surviving Christmas. It is a Christmas season, but specifically, how do you do that parenting? Mm-hmm. And, and what the guys ask will come up as we talk about through the night, but or through the day rather. But what we're talking about is surviving Christmas, and what better parenting clip, <laughs> and what's better movie that talks about surviving Christmas than Christmas Vacation? So let's go ahead and play it. <laughs> Dad, didn't they invent Christmas tree lots so people wouldn't have to drive all the way out to nowhere and waste a whole Saturday? They invented them, Russ, because people forgot how to have a fun, old-fashioned family Christmas and are satisfied with scrawny, dead, overpriced trees that have no special meaning. My toes are numb. You see, kids, this is what our forefathers did. I can't feel my leg. They walked out into the woods, they picked out that special tree, and they cut it down with their bare hands. Mom, I can't feel my hips. Clark. Yes, honey. Audrey's frozen from the waist down. Uh, that's all part of the experience, honey. <laughs> there it is. The Griswold family Christmas tree. not big it's just full dad that thing wouldn't fit in our yard not going in our yard russ it's going in our living room <sighs> look at it really is beautiful clock something else huh russ yeah dad isn't it beaut audrey she'll see it later honey her eyes are frozen most enduring traditions of the season are best enjoyed in the warm embrace of kith and kin <laughs> the three are the symbol of the spirit of the griswold family christmas dad did you bring a saw <laughs> <laughs> i think dad's tongue was frozen <laughs> yeah i think something uh, lots of things were fr- frozen then yeah. but th- that's teenagers and we're going to get to teenagers just in a second because they're their own special special breed at christmas time or actually at any time but you know, you guys all had kids that were young. How easy was it and how fun was it to have Christmas with young kids? Oh, it was great. It was great. Just my daughter, Taylor, uh, it kind of brought the kid back out in me. Uh, I'd get excited about Christmas and putting the cookies out. And her and I built these traditions of looking at Christmas lights and going to Waffle House of all places and eating breakfast. And and it was t- it, little stuff that probably didn't mean anything to anyone else but they meant something to us as she got older that started to change a little bit because it wasn't quite as cool to hang out with dad all the time when you were a teenager uh i didn't take her anywhere and freeze her from the hips down but but uh, a lot of good stuff there were kids and then you get then you get to come back to that i think you were talking about i'm going to be a granddad next march and i look forward to going through that again with my grandson yeah i think just uh we were talking a little bit before the show that you know, you, you go through the cycle of raising kids. And, and when they're little, you think there's challenges, and there are. But some of the biggest challenges that you have when they're little is, you know, which present of the hundreds that are on TV that they want do you get them, <laughs> right? How to teach them about God in the midst of all the commercialism, yeah. right, and the true meaning, and there's lots of things that you need to do there. Uh, but as they get older, it gets so much more complex. Now, Robbie, I know you've been through the cycle a couple times, but doesn't it get a little bit ch- more challenging the older they get? Oh, which was the question that, you know, that the parents said, how do I make sure that I stay connected to my daughter? And I thought, you know, the, the, the older they get, the more it's difficult because, you know, when they were younger, it's like, hey, Dad, I'm home with Let's go do this. Let's go decorate the tree and all this stuff. But when they hit about 13, something happens, and they go up to their room, they stick pods in their ear or some kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> and, you know... They want you, but they want you at whatever distance and at whatever time because everything's an inconvenience, right, Sam? Mm-hmm. It is, and I think it starts with you know the groundwork you lay. And the question that the guy asked, he, he was a, a man that had teenage daughters, and he was talking to these teenage boys from the um, North Carolina Boys Academy that's been through some challenges in life. Um, you know, that they're, you know, working through those challenges. And mm-hmm. so he's asking their advice, which was really a, a real classic time at camp. It was very cool. But he just wanted to know what to do. And I thought it was really interesting, some of what they shared with him. Robert, do you remember some of the stuff they shared? Yeah, absolutely. They were 
wanting their parents to engage and care about what they do and, and want to be involved in their life, mm-hmm. which sounded easy. But then I was sitting there going, wait a minute, you know, I've got teenagers. That ain't so easy. No, it's and it requires that walk with like, God, what do I do with this situation? Because you want them, you know, you see that with Clark Gis- Griswold, you know, it's part of the experience. He wants them to be, but it, he's not like finding his way through there. He's like pushing his way through there. You know, something else that goes along with that, that I was thinking about is you, I remember a couple of years ago when I was doing some driving for the rescue mission, I went out on Saturdays and I can remember around Christmas time and I saw all these families out and, uh, and a lot of the parents were on their cell phones and their media devices. And even though Christmas vacation was made in 1989, you didn't see any cell phones or any computers or anything in that whole movie. He was trying to create this old fashioned Christmas. I think with kids today and parenting them through this is that some, somehow we've got to kind of slow down together and get out of all the social media and everything. Otherwise we kind of miss that time with each other And I think that's a challenge for a parent today. Back even when my daughter was growing up, I mean, we had some, there's certain things she got more diverted to as a teenager, but as a youngster, I could really focus on things that were, that were fun things to do, like looking for tacky Christmas lights. And she wasn't as interested in going on the cell phone and seeing what was happening on Facebook. I think that's a whole new dynamic that we have in parenting these days. And I imagine it carries over into the holidays as well. Can you repeat that? I was tweeting out what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, saw, I saw you thinking heavily about that. And put no, that, that out. No, no, Thank no, you, no. President Trump. <laughs> no, that's, that's a great point. You know, and, and we're going to go to break here in a, a minute or so. But talking about, you know, what's the challenges with little kids and how, to, how do you need to ask God to help you with them? And I think part of what we talked a little bit about, which was how do I introduce the Christmas story in a way that, in, in, that really – resonates in their heart Mm -hmm. you know god how how with this particular child and not all kids are the same you know i had four of them and it would be four different ways that really reach their heart with that type of story Mm -hmm. which is vitally important that they understand that you know because the rest of that whole christmas stuff passes in time but the truth remains the same all the way through and then as we enter into the teenage years robbie as you talked about is inviting god into how do i enter in their lives in this season how do i be integral and when we come back we're going to talk more about the teenage years and then move into the adult years we think that's easier (laughs) not always (laughs) right now let you go register for the boot camp coming up in april and it's a buy one get one free season so please go register now and bring somebody and help them find their heart back and help you find your heart back hi this is sam with mask on journey i'm here with my son eli we're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. Then you can go to facebook.com where you can click the donate button. Or you can go to masculinejourneyradio.org. Once again, look for the donate button. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to PO Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. I am William Wallace. You've come to fight as three men. And free men you are. What will you do without freedom? Find out from Jesus what you will do with that freedom. A four-day adventure with God. It's a Masculine Journey Radio Boot Camp. Boot Camp is designed to give men permission to be what God designed them to be. Passionate warriors for the kingdom. Coming in April the 12th through the 15th. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org to register while you're thinking about it. Not relatives Haven't seen them in a long long time mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of missed them I just don't want to kiss them No, and it's Christmas All over Again <laughs> <laughs> we're just laughing about that bumper music. Dennis, thank you for picking that. That's actually kind of funny but sad because we lost Tom Petty this year. Yeah, the late great Tom Petty, and that was back from the first Home Alone movie that introduced the first Home Alone movie was that song. And, uh, you know, you think about that with kids. You know, really, I think he wrote it with the perspective of kids or teenagers and the holidays with family and what, you know, all these people are going to show up that I haven't seen. I hope I don't have to kiss them. 
Oh, yeah. You, you know? see that in Christmas Vacation. <laughs> you know? That's right. Aunt What's-Her-Face wants to kiss Rusty. Or she, wrapped up, she wrapped up her cat. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't condone the whole movie, but there are some funny parts. <laughs> Just don't watch. It's not a family movie, necessarily. Yeah. Welcome back to The Mask and Journey. We're talking about surviving Christmas parenting. You know, and at the beginning of this uh, segment, the first segment we talked about when the kids are really little, you know, and, and how to invite God into helping them understand the true story of Christmas, right? S- specifically to the way that's going to reach their heart. And, and one of the things that to me is critical there that I really begin to understand more this year is the generosity of God. Mm-hmm. That when you're getting these beautiful presents, it's, it's an illustration of what a kingly gift is, that, that God gave us something that represented more, of more value than anything that he, we could possibly imagine, actually the life of his son. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. That's a great point. You and, struck on that a few years ago, I think, with uh, a little series we did heading into the Christmas season about gifts, the different gifts that come from God. That's awesome. I, I hadn't thought about that lately. Yeah, that's a reflection of, of generosity and giving. And then we enter the teenage years. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Everything changes. And that is a difficult season or can be. Well, it just depends on the moment. Sometimes it's joyful season. Sometimes it's... Uh, not so joyful season. It just depends on. It's on a the challenge. Moment. It's it draws you into God's lap because He's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> yeah, drive your attention now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about you know the the boot camp when the one man turned to the boys and said, hey, what what do I do here? You know, how do I make sure my teenage daughters, you know, don't end up in the wrong place or with the wrong people kind of thing. And we talked about last segment that they need to, the, the, the fathers and mothers need to engage in their life, right? Be active in their life. And some of that is enjoying the things they enjoy or finding a way to participate in the things they enjoy, even if you don't really enjoy them that much, hmm. right? You know, enter into their world, lack of a better term. But there were a few other things that they talked about too, Robbie. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, kind of struck home, unfortunately, with me was anger. Like when the parents get out of control, that, you know, that drives a big, you know, wedge in there. And if that's a young daughter and she sees that and she doesn't feel like she can get close to her dad because of anger issues, which, you know, for whatever reason, Christmas can, you know, bring out the Griswold and all of them. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you and then you carry that with you into, you know, you may not be a teenager anymore. You're grown up and married and you. And you still have that going on. You come home for the holidays and you got all kinds of bickering and arguing happening. You do. And we're going to play a clip on that just real quick. But one of the last things that the, the kids said was consistency. Hmm. Right. Just being consistent. Which, which, which dad am I going to get? Which mom am I going to get on a consistent basis? Because that inconsistency doesn't, doesn't allow them to be comfortable. Right. They don't know what they're dealing with. And they're at a season already where there's lots of things up in the air they need something that's consistent in their life. You know, yeah. and I think I think during this, as we think about parenting during Christmas, I think one of the things that strikes me about what you just said there is that there's so many parents out there that try to make up for the other 11 months out of the year during the during the time of Christmas. And if you if you if you've had sort of a rough relationship, of whether there's anger issues or whatever. A kid, as they, as they get older and they get in their teen years, they're not dummies. They're smart, and you can't make up for all that and have a, all of a sudden want to have a great relationship with them. It has to carry on throughout the year. Yeah, well, why don't you go ahead and set up our next clip? Well, it's from, a, it's from a movie that I honestly haven't seen the whole movie yet, but I was interested in seeing it after I saw these clips. It's called Almost Christmas, and what happens is the family's all gotten together for Christmas. I think the mother has passed away, and this may be, in fact, the first Christmas that she's not with them. And they have just gotten there. It hasn't been very long, and the family is uh, having a little problem. Remember after I, got, after I got married, Mom finally let me make the stuffing? That obviously didn't work out. Okay. Really? I was talking about the dressing. You cannot help yourself, and it is baffling. We were talking about our mother, and somehow you made it about my marriage. I wasn't talking about your marriage. I'm talking about your divorce. At least I was smart enough to get bigger. one. Oh, hey, I'm still in the room. Okay, girls. 88's in the house! <laughs> Are y'all fighting already? No, pack your stuff. We're going to a hotel. A hotel? A hostel hotel. Hey, it's the same thing. It'll be you an adventure. Don't waste a bus pass on my account. Let's go. Hey, 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 h
Here we go. You two, get down here now. What's wrong with you two? I didn't start this, Daddy. Oh my God, you always start this. Actually, you both started it. You know what? You stay out of it. You're just making it worse. I'm making the, okay, I'm, oh, I'm lying now. This is Ouch, exactly bro. why I want to stay in the hotel, Pop. Well, what's stopping you now, huh? Nothing's I'm stopping me. Start. You know, I'm not gonna let you be Quiet, 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 quiet. What would your mother say if she could see you carrying on like this, huh? Five days. Just, just, just five days for you all to act like a family. To act like you have the good sense you were raised with. Five days so we can make it through Christmas. That's all I'm asking. Can you do that? Huh? Love you, Pops. You gotta hug me back. I need it. There it is. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that sounds like probably a lot of the households out there. You know, I know it has at times in, in my past. You know, I was thinking about, you know, as we were talking, uh, before we get into this clip, Dennis, something you said was, you know, parents try to make up. Mm-hmm you know, at Christmas time for the rest of the year. And thinking back over the years, all the time growing up, I may remember an isolated present Mm -hmm. once in a while that I got, but that's not what my memories are full of. They're full of the family times. Yeah, They're full of the Griswold traditions. They're full of those other things, you know, that the presents come and go. And I don't think I still have a single present that I got as a kid. Yeah. Right. I'd look kind of funny in my big wheel mm-hmm. <laughs> out rolling it around. I would like to see that. I don't think I'd fit my big wheel. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be a big, big, big wheel. <laughs> you know, my, when I was up in Virginia over Thanksgiving, my parents and I were talking about because I got up there and I was concerned. I didn't know if they'd, you know, decorate for the holidays and everything. And they had everything up, all you know, trees and lights and stuff everywhere. And uh, we talked a lot about past Christmases and some of the things that we did and some of the things that happened when we were kids. You know, my dad worked two or three jobs when we were kids just so we could have things like Christmas. And, I mean, they, they spoiled us to death during that time. They didn't do it the whole year, but they really loved doing that. But I can also remember that we never lost sight of what Christmas was really all about. And I think even as we got older, as we became teenagers and we were kind of drifting away into other things, I don't think I ever lost sight of the fact that we knew what Christmas was really about, the birth of a Savior. And I'm thankful to my parents for that and thankful that we have a lot of the traditions that carried with us. I mean, they gave me the Santa Claus that they had the first year that I was born, their first Christmas together. And I have that in my house right now lit up. He still works just like I do after all these years, a little slower. But, um, and I think about those Christmases every time I light that Santa up. Yeah, it's probably full of like bad chemicals as old as it is. Just oh, I'm thought. sure it is. But <laughs> I'm way Wasn't past that. that. <laughs> Vinny, a question for you. Um, as your kids get older, I mean, you've been through the cycle. Your kids are, are older than, than some of us. And <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, they are. Not all of us. A lot of well, the, those, those guys, but not me. But how do you, how do you invite God into that over the years as Christmas comes up? Isn't that more of a conversation with him and praying for them along the way as Christmas comes? Doesn't it transition a little bit? Without a doubt, you put that into them. But just a little bit off the uh, center here. You guys, I'm listening to you guys about, you know, gadgets and all this stuff. Well, I was in the 1930s. That's a long time ago. And Christmas to us at that time was, I mean, you could go to bigger shopping uh, area, Times Square, and it was music, the smell of chestnuts. Somebody wrote a song about that. And the kids were all over the place, and the mothers and fathers were carrying all the packages, and we wouldn't help them. But the idea... And the feeling of Christmas and our parents taking us with them was what made it Christmas in actuality, just to run around. You get yelled at by our fathers, help your mother, you know. She's <laughs> carrying all the packages. No, you help her, your husband, you know. Um, 
<laughs> That's the way it was. That's what Christmas was, Kala. And the spirit that was in the air. Now you can't get into Times Square because we got other problems. But that's what I remember Christmas and my parents. Color was so beautiful, red, white, green, all different colors of the shopping bags. And we were supposed to all of them. We were running around all over the place. Didn't want to have nothing. And if it snowed, oh my goodness gracious, you really looked up in the sky and you said, yeah, look at the reindeer. Now that's before Santa could grow a beard. <laughs> no. oh, Vinny, thank that's you. That's true, <laughs> Robbie. Uh, we're, we got about a half a minute left here, but how's it change in that relationship with God as your kids get older and you get into Christmas? I mean, you really have to invite Him into that along the way, don't you? Yeah, and the neat thing is, He's got a new present for you every year, mm-hmm. and and it seems like a, a season where I've got to dig in and figure out what you've got so that I can have something to share with those that I do love and to, to make it feel like, you know, I'm, I'm creating heaven for my kids. Yeah, and the thing that we would just leave you with today as we talk about this is there's not a season in parenting that you don't invite God into it. If you do, you're gonna struggle even more than you'll struggle along the way. And especially at Christmas, you know, God, how can I reach out to them in a, such a loving way, whether it be a present, whether it be a gesture, whether it be a phone call or a hug, as we heard in that last clip, what is it that's going to reach the heart of my child? You know him better than I do, and you know me better than I know myself. Go to maskandjourneyradio.org to register for the boot camp now. We'll see you next week. Or hear you.